have here is a project starting with a model that's made out of polymer clay it's already baked okay now uh, our end product what we're after is um, uh, polymer clay molds especially made for pressing clay okay in order to make it easy for the artist to recreate this model exactly like it is it has to be cut up in pieces each leg has his own mold he'll be cut like here at an angle and each arm has its own mold and uh, in this particular instance the hands will also be included in the mold with the arms now we don't want to damage this piece it has yet to be finished it'll be sent back to the artist to be um, polished up and finished and um, and dressed and so we need to send it back in the same condition we got it and if you'll notice we've got some really tiny fingers here to deal with and some very deep cuts into the mouth it's really deep in there and so there's going to be a lot of problems with this one as we go along that we need to deal with so I had a choice I could use uh, liquid latex as I've done before to uh, make a rubber mold that will last long enough for me to cast hydrostone in there and then I can cut up the hydrostone instead of cutting up the model but uh, it takes so long with liquid latex that I decided to opt for silicone this time and so I ordered in Smooth On's uh, Rebound 2025, 20, which is uh, kind of a, it's a good brush on rubber. And we're going to use that then to make a, a mold, a rubber mold, and then use a plastic to make a mother mold for our rubber mold. And then I will use a brand new Zacto blade plus uh, a pair of very tiny um, needlework scissors that I have they're very very sharp to remove the mold and make seams to get it off and then once we've got the mold made we will package these up send them back to the artist and we will be able to make our own hydrostone cast and have an exact duplicate of this one and that we can cut up okay the uh, silicone rubber is a two-part okay is part A and part B of your rubber and uh, and I have measured out I like using these little two ounce Dixie cups because then I don't have to I, I have less problems with waste and these two I need to mix together it's a little hard to work with because uh, it doesn't exactly flow it's kind of like messing with um, the icing that you put on cookies <laughs> it's kind of that consistency I use uh, tongue depressors and you can pick those up at Michaels or whatever your craft supply because if you have to you can just throw them away okay now I'll save that Part A. This has to be mixed up thoroughly. They say to mix it for three minutes. Now it has a pot life of 30 minutes. 
that means that from the time I've started mixing these together to the time it starts getting too rigid for me to work with would be about 30 minutes. Be sure and keep a paper towel handy because <laughs> you can be constantly cleaning it up. Now what you need is one of these little tiny, like a little half inch paintbrush from, uh, they're, they're the little cheap things, what, two or three in a package or something. I'll be using this and a, uh, another paintbrush that is, it's half inch. You have to be exactly the same size, but what I like about this is that the bristles are long enough that they're flexible, but uh, it still has a little bit of rigidity to push with. And what I'm going to do with this, <clears throat> I've got some very deep details on this model, and I need to make sure that I pick them all up. So my first coat is going to be a fairly thin coat that is going to be used to pick up those details. If I have a place that's really deep like this mouth, I need to be careful not to push it in there too hard because uh, the uh, cavity inside the mouth might open up larger inside than it is where I can see it and that would make it very difficult to get this off later. So the reason I've hung these is because um, I need to get a total mold, the entire thing. Okay, I'm pushing it in behind the ears. Push it into the ear, little ear cavities there. And because I wanted an overall mold, I couldn't stand this piece up. I would have to stand it on top of its head if I did. And uh, so I've hung it. I could have used a stiffer brush. It would have been easier to work with. But this is, uh, I don't want to scratch up the model in any way. So it may take a little bit longer for me to get this done. I have my first coat on there. And I was being very careful to get, dab it into the eyes, the mouth, between the fingers. Uh, I want to catch the little grooves in the toes. Uh, behind the ears, these are like pixie ears, so we have a, a huge undercut there. And that's what I need to make sure I caught on the first coat. And the first coat is just, it's a very thin layer. It's drippy, as you can probably see. And uh, I'm just going to let it sit there. Also, I'm going to let it set up in my brush because the secret to silicone and the one nice thing I like about it, it doesn't stick to anything. So, um, what you know, it, it's dripping all over the table. It, even if it, gets, if it gets on your clothes or on the carpet, don't touch it. Don't try to clean it up while it's still wet. Just let it set up and then go over and pick it up. It, it'll have, if it drops on the, on the carpet, it'll give you a perfect mold of your carpet. <laughs> if it gets on your clothes, same thing. Don't touch it. If you get it rubbed into the fibers, you can never get it out. Uh, but if you just let it sit there and do its thing and set up, uh, a couple hours later, you can come along and just pull it right up. Here's a piece that, <laughs> that dripped on my uh, tile that I was working with. And all I had to do is pull it up. Of course, that's a uh, smooth surface. One of the reasons that I decided to go with silicone is because uh, we are going to go into the entire project, the entire project. That is starting from the model, uh, and then we want to duplicate it off the model so we can butcher it all up. Then we're going to make the molds, 
and then we're going to make masters of each of those moles so that we can turn out moles because the end product are the moles and I was using uh, polyurethane after a couple of tears I mean little rips on the edge or something um, I decided I'm, I'm done with polyurethane I'm I'm finished with it I will go silicone from now on and this is the reason why look how tough this stuff is I mean this is I really don't have any more strength than that I finally tore it. I think it takes, well, I don't know, a good 50 pounds of pressure to, to tear it. Um, it's it's tough. It lasts forever. You take care of it, it'll take care of you. And right now, I've got to clean up a mess. So, uh, in about an hour, when this is tacky, and tacky means I can touch it, I can feel it sticky, but it doesn't get on my finger. Uh, as soon as it's tacky, I can go for the second coat, so I'll be back then.